three. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. This is the Wix online meeting number 89. We're getting close to another round number of 90 and something like that. Maybe we'll do some celebration for 100, which will probably be next year. Um, as it is, it's November, midway through November. We'll probably take one of these weeks off since I think Thanksgiving lands on a Thursday and usually it's Friday after that. So um, anyway, these are fun meetings. Uh, we have a fun surprise for everybody today that is developing this morning, which is why everything's more than a little crazy. Um, but we'll get to that. So these meetings are recorded for those people that aren't able to be with us here. Let's get into a little bit of that agenda I was going to talk about. Uh, we'll do triage. We've lost Bob. I'm, I don't know what happened. I'm afraid like maybe power went out in his house. So uh, Jacob's going to, or uh, Sean's going to step up and do triage, which means we need Jacob, John, and Phil to uh, fill in the peanut uh, gallery. Um, the next thing is we'll talk about what Wix V3102 is going to be because, yes, we're going to have to do that. At least we think we are. We're pretty sure. I'll talk about it a little bit when we get there. Uh, then we'll do the usual questions and comments things. Um, so, triage. Sean, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. We have way too many issues, but whatever. A bunch of these are features, so hopefully it's like, oh, yeah, we should do that sometime. Um, 4262, uh, new get packs generated by this file name. So, Sean, you've reopened this. It was set to 4x, and I was thinking that if we change it, it's a breaking change. So we should do it in 4.0? Yeah. All right. I think that's probably a good idea. Let's bring it 4.0 and make the decision what we're going to do there, if we're going to do the version name placeholder or whatever we're going to do, however we're going to make that happen. Because as we discussed last time, because I remember this vividly, is we have to – the version comes from inside the tools, which means they'll have to, after the fact, decide what – the version of the file name, the, what the name of the file name should be, and uh, so anyway. Right. Um, update replace. I believe we got more detail here. Jacob had a question, and then maybe this is related to that. Yeah. So, and we don't have. Oh, we don't have log files yet. Okay. We still have that. All right. So I guess just wait another week for logs. Yeah, I think we'll wait another week. Maybe Jacob, if he has some time to point at it, things like that. It sounded sounded a little familiar to something Jacob said in the past, and I don't remember. Yeah, that's that's it. That Jacob said his code in 4x would fix it. So we'll see. Um, specify BA functions at compile time. Yes, BA DLL and that specify the compile and DLL. I think this is a reasonable idea. And since Sean's really to do that, I think there's a. a a whip for that too, right? Did I see that go by somewhere? Yeah, I put a whip out there. Yeah, all right. And the same for this, right? More so about BA functions. Yep. Yes. All right, cool. I think we'll take both of those. Change define contents property should trigger rebuild. This one took me a while to figure out. They use the MS build property define constants to pass valuables used to, from the build server to MS build. So they're actually using define constants directly instead of having a variable that is then used by defined constants inside their package. And if you change it, nothing happens. This is an MS build behavior. Um, setting properties on the command line is not going to change anything. Um, I think it might, like sometimes it'll record which properties were used during building and then if it somehow it detects the change, like it saves no. the properties that we use. No, it doesn't. No. No, it doesn't do that. It's all based off timestamps. So something inside the list of files that are in the project has to change, like the MS build project file or uh, one of the files that are listed by the project file. Something has to change. So I don't think there's really any way of doing this. And this is like it's not an MS build behavior. If you were to write values to an intermediate that had the tacit exchange, yes, but if you wrote the file, yeah, you could read a file that said, oh, this property is already set, then don't write the file, then you would not do rebuild. But you couldn't write that file every time. Um, you, if you, every time you changed a file, then it would, yeah, make everything rebuild. So this is a this is an MS build behavior. This is not a Wix behavior. So I think they 
so basically, let's resolve this as external and say this is an MS build behavior, and they can go change it if they want, but it's not anything we can do in our targets directly without writing some crazy task or target or whatever to do that. Cool? Sure. All right. So I think we'll resolve that as MS build behavior. Wix UI Mondo does not show correct names. Oh, just found that this bug is a general plague in Windows. All source applications in English use some sort of folder browser, so there is no solution. Cool. So this is external to Windows as well. I saw this come in where it said, if you mark your package as English and then you run it on Danish, that you'll the built-in browser, built-in folder browser shows things in English. It's like, oh, yeah, well, that's busted, isn't it? Um, so anyway, this sounds like a Windows issue. So how about we resolve this external as well? That makes it easy. It does. I like all these external things. Um, burn should set a variable when a restart is required to apply. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, this is what I've seen. The theme Now that we have the Wix 4 initializing stuff off properties that are available inside burn. We're getting more and more stuff that we want to make sure that the functionality of burn is available as a variable. Which I don't yeah. think is bad. I'm not sure if the engine should do it or Wix standard BA should do it. Um, I think that's a fine thing to put in the comment and then we would take it. But either way, I think having it would be a fine thing to have. Right. So I think that, that point you raise is a good thing for us to discuss when we get around to implementing said feature. Um, custom BAs wouldn't get notified. That's true. Custom BAs wouldn't be able to be built on it. Um, exec CAs expose sensitive data. Oh, are these not marked hidden target? Yeah, that probably seems reasonable. If they're not, probably a good thing to do if they write their data with things. I've, yeah, people have talked about this before. I... I think we said before that this is intended behavior. The hit marking a hidden target? I mean, the way it works, like, because John is saying set the properties to hidden. So basically, if you want to be hidden, then put what you want to be hidden in a, in a property. Yeah, but hidden target, but if the custom action is logging its custom action data, you can't hide that. Or can you? I guess you could mark the custom action data, whatever the property name is. No, it doesn't. The custom action will show it. Yeah. I am torn on this. The workaround is not horrible, but it's the whole... When they're hidden, they're just not much fun to deal with. Yeah, it's just visible by default also means we show these things by default. And they do list the partial workaround for the XML CAs. Oh, wait, but, hmm. Unhiding it is impossible. I wonder if we have a secure exec XML config so that 
by default you don't have to do this but if you want to secure one then you do that it's more work on our side but then you can keep the debug ability Yeah, like Jacob says, duplicate. And that's kind of what I'm saying is duplicate it, but add the hidden target and having us do the work to pick the right one. I don't know. The debug ability is such a pain when you don't have this available. So I guess just spin a 3x and see who wants to do it? Yeah, I think that's the answer. We put in 3x. Add those extra comments of maybe we should look at a secure exec kind of thing. And figure out what we want to do there. Yep. Connection to local DB fails. I can connect to SQL Express However, the machine is local DB. Um, Wix uses the wrong version of OLADB. Well, we use a version of OLADB. Um, so, well, I could not find searching and release notes. This has been fixed in 3.8.3.9. So we have a feature here. I think let's make this a feature, and basically it's a add support for connecting to local DB. I guess that sounds good. Because it's like, hey, yeah, we don't support local DB. It's like, yeah, those custom actions haven't been updated in forever. Um, and so for they need to be updated to support local DB, apparently, which doesn't surprise me. So let's do that. We'll move to a feature and that, and then we can toss it in, I guess, 3x. It won't be breaking because it should be a new functionality. And that's, that's all of them, right? That gets us through nine. All right. And we leave this one open for coming back. Cool. Well, that went faster. Like you said, Sean, most of them were features, so it wasn't going to be too yeah. bad. So, Jacob, they can't do that. Local DB is special. Well, local DB doesn't support whatever SQL communication library we use in the past because they probably deprecated it and... You know, that code probably hasn't been updated since 1999, so <laughs> it's like, yeah, they don't support that anymore. All right, well, someone needs to do work to support local DB. Not a big deal. It's really just using the newer library, and then it'll just magically start working. Presumably. Don't know how hard it is to use the new library. I'm not even sure what the new library is. I haven't looked at that code in so ancient forever long ago. All right, so moving on. This morning, well, Jacob, so for local DB, we can add new code to make sure it doesn't work. Or, you know, we can toss it in four and, yeah. But, yes, we'll have to keep working for all versions of SQL that we still support, <laughs> which I guess that's a question, too. But, anyway, makes it a whole interesting feature for someone to write when they want to. So, got an interesting report this morning through a roundabout way. Someone thinks they found a security vulnerability in Wix 3.10.2. Um, we're hunting it down in Fire Giant. We think we've, we think we understand how it can happen. Um, and if our understanding is correct, a fix will be required. Um, and if a fix is required, we'll push it out as fast as we can. Um, I'm being vague about it because we actually think it's a Windows issue not a Wix issue, and we're going to do the workaround in Wix. So we're going to make sure that an MSRC is opened with uh, Windows um, about this issue. Because um, we're not... We just got it this morning, so we're going to go figure out. There, we didn't find any known MSRCs about this issue, so this thing could be brand new. Um, or at least, yeah, brand new as in just found. I don't know how old the vulnerability has been around. Um, <laughs> and so as soon as we run that around, um, we will put together the pieces, and then a new Wix 3.10.2 will be out.
for people that pretty much um, people will need to pick up to avoid the security um, vulnerability in Windows if our hypotheses all end up being correct. Um, so, uh, Jacob, I don't understand the to have a published definition of it. Of it, uh, yeah. So we're like I said, we're being we got it reported to us as an issue in Wix. We think it's an issue in Windows, so we're going to make sure that it's reported to Windows and let them deal with it, so they don't end up with a uh, zero day exploit that they don't have an opportunity to do whatever they want with and we're going to try to come up with a workaround on our side so that we can avoid it um, this is the first time we've had anybody report any security vulnerability against Wix so we're trying to be appropriately uh, uh, give everybody that they're involved the appropriate time to go fix the issue while getting the issues fixed on our side as quickly as possible so anyway Excitement on the Wix uh, V3.10.2 side. Mass excitement. Um, so, anyway, keep an eye out on that. Um, you guys that follow all this, you guys here will see the, the pull request as soon as it comes across. Um, then we'll do a build, assuming that we verify that. <laughs> if our hypo hypothesis all lay out, we'll get it all pushed through and then, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> wait and see what, I don't know, we'll see. It's, it's, we're going to be real careful. We'll figure out the right thing and we'll go from there. So uh, that'll be a 3.10.2. Very likely that we're going to have a 3.10.2. If not, we'll come back next week and say, hey, no big deal. It wasn't a real vulnerability. Never mind that false alarm and that would be great. Um, but based off the investigations thus far, I don't think we're going to get that lucky. Other business, other things people want to talk about, questions, comments, reactions, other things people want to talk about this week, besides the very vague security vulnerability that may or may not exist, um, which I'm sure everybody's interest has peaked. Uh, uh, appreciate that, Jacob. If we, we get to that point, we will we'll definitely show you. We can show some of you guys that work on the still set closely. Uh, we got a report. We think that, you know, it's a we think we have can repro it and all that kind of stuff. So um, we're getting close. It just literally happened this morning, so we've had you know, only a couple hours to digest it and burn it all down. Um, anything else? Quiet day. All right. Well, everybody, give Sean a round of applause. He did a very good job filling in for Bob. Look at that, and Bob just showed up right at the end of the meeting. I think maybe. Do we just get a Bob? Yes. Yes. Hey. So, Sean did a very good job um, filling in for you. We went through triage and all that kind of stuff. So, um, he took notes because we don't know the triage team password. We'll work on that in the future. <laughs> so we can have other people fill in for Bob um, when Bob's unable to make it. My guess is that the known password didn't work. Um, so, uh, anyway, I'm glad to hear that. Hopefully, your power outage or whatever is all good, um, and hopefully, life is back to normal as it can be, minus a security vulnerability that we're both running around, making sure we can track down all angles of and be appropriately uh, responsive on it. I guess that's the way to say that, Bob? Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> <coughs> all right. Well, thank you, Jacob. Uh, we'll just email those notes all back to us, and we'll get the bugs updated, things like that. Um, if there's nothing else, then I think we're going to go back um, and get back on the issue that we're hunting. Um, we'll get the bugs updated hopefully sometime today or Monday. Um, and then go out there. And uh, I think I'm going to call it here before I start breaking out a coughing fit since I've been sick all week after being at the summit, MVP summit all last week. It's like, ugh, back to back, way too much stuff. Plus birthdays and anniversaries galore. It's like, man, what a time. All right, so I hope you guys are all feeling very well. Um, it's all kind of upside down this morning. So you guys take it easy until next week. We'll have more information. We'll have stuff to talk about, and we'll go from there. So signing off.
Sean, you want to say goodbye on the way out? And Bob Cassie, I'll let you guys fight for the last words out. I'm out. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.